Hi, this is Emily from Lunchbox TV. Today I have with me Kieran. What's up? Tell us about this album that you've just released, Melting Conceptually, which is how I feel right now because yeah. it's stinking hot in here. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, so like about three years ago, I decided that um, I wanted to make an album and it became sort of this like story of, of a guy who um, is stuck in this sort of like different reality, if you will, um, and he's like going on a journey to choose whether he wants to go to heaven or hell. And he sort of like tests them both out and then at the end, it's up to the listener to decide which, where he went. Do you want to tell us about the, the tracks on the album? Some of them are from a few years ago. Yep. Um, why did you pick these particular tracks? Each individual song has a meaning and has a place in, in, the, in the story of the entire record and the most meaningful to me is a song called 2403. I was, I was literally just about to bring that <laughs> <Yeah>. up. <laughs> yeah, so that one's like a real deep one. It's where I was able to sort of tap deeper into myself and put that into my music as opposed to making a lot of hard EDM beats and um, getting really um, technical with my production and stuff. So it was mm. cool to sort of step away and do some more shit that was like really real. I watched you at the Lansdowne playing that song, which is actually where we are right now. Is that your first time playing at the Lansdowne? No, the first time I played it was um, just before the album came out at the Opera House. My mum was in the, my mum and dad were in the crowd. Yeah. I referenced them a lot in the song, mm -hmm. and a lot of like a lot of like what inspired the song, I went through with them. But um, every time I play it, it's fun because it's such a um, it's such a like, a, it changes the mood so fast in the set. A lot of my set is energy and, um, and power and, and, and like lots of like hard beats and bass and you know what I mean? So this, this the, to have like a breather and sort of slow it down and um, get people engaging was like, is like the best part. Yeah. Sick. When did you play at the Opera House? A couple months ago. Um, <laughs> it was part of Vivid. I played before Ice Cube. Yeah, oh, for Ice Cube? Yeah. But it was, I, it was in a different room. I didn't meet him, no. I met his band. I didn't meet him. Oh, I saw his band, yeah. You were mentioning earlier that, uh, to me off the camera, that you um, originally wanted to do film before you started making music. Yeah, the whole like way I got into making music was I used to run around in the small town that I grew up in with a video camera and like force my friends to come and make movies with me. Basically, nice. yeah. I'd give them like Nerf guns and we'd make little action movies. They're still on YouTube to this day and I'll, I'll give someone $500 if you can find it. Yeah, so then I wanted to learn more about the sound design and how to make all the sound effects and stuff and that sort of led into music. How long does it usually take to come up with the music video concept? Are you involved in that process at all? Yeah, so I've, I have one music video right now that's out. It's for my song Bright Dawn. Yes, I watched that. Cool, yeah. So this that, morning. Yeah. yeah, nice. Well, that one was, um, we came up me and my manager came up with the idea um, and it took us like maybe about a week, two weeks of planning and then I went to Melbourne to film it and it was so much fun because I was I was just back in that um, world of videography and stuff so we were building all the sets from scratch um, and shout out to Hood Wolf who did that video, it was like such a sick vibe, we tried to do like a little black mirror kind of vibe. I so, felt that, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's the first thing you think of? when you walk out onto the stage? Um, just look like a sitcom. <laughs> <laughs> Don't trip over. Just put a smile on your face and then just go from there. Really, I'm thinking, well, I know before before I go on stage, mm. I, I, I talk to my nan, um, just in my head, I talk to my mum. Mm. I remember why I started. You're doing this for yourself, you're doing this for your family. And you gotta remember that Anytime you walk on stage, you have a certain amount of time to show whoever's in front of you who you are, what you're about, what you stand for in your music. You know, just try try your best to, to convert what your message is. Yeah. Yeah. Very, know, very mature. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's something less mature. <laughs> If you could have a power, what would it be? Teleport. <laughs> See, mine would be um, trans-dimensional teleportation. What's, oh, so you can go into a different dimension. So you can go into like different dimensions, like teleport into books and stuff, and into like TV shows. That'd be cool, yeah. Um, why teleporting? Because it's just expensive convenient. flying everywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just convenient. Like, you literally, like, you 
cut out every single middleman there possibly is. I enjoy flying a little bit though. Yeah? I like the aeroplane too. I love flying too. Mm. Um, but yeah, I just don't like the food. It's roast and it's like soggy and wet. <laughs> Would you ever fly a plane? Uh, if I could, I would, yeah. Mm. Do you want to take cool. some lessons? With yeah. me on the weekend? Is that what you're doing? No, but you can do it. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Thank you for having me. And whoever's watching, make sure you go check out my album called Melty Conceptually. And there's more music on the way. <sighs> so, <clears throat> I'm Emily. I'm Kieran. And <laughs> this is Lunchbox TV. <clears throat> what do I say now? <laughs>